situations, my children. A lot of what we look at around here does still come back to the big two companies of Marvel and DC. So why don't we celebrate something from a real independent scene? Hmm? Spirits of St. Louis comes to us from a group of St. Louis creators who went to an Applebee's and put together a horror anthology spotlighting independent creators. No, seriously, the comic even says how that came about. And so we have here 13 stories of varying quality with adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe stories like The Raven or The Cask of Amontillado and more original works. Because of course we only have so much time here to talk, let's spotlight a few and you can see for yourself what sort of things can come out of a little wine and dine. I can only hope they drank blood on the occasion for maximum effect. Although some stories are not as bloody, but still very painful. For instance, there is the story of The Portrait about a family that moves into a new house now that they've outgrown their little hovel. The father, Samuel, has inherited the place from his deceased Uncle Philip, who for years lived in the place all alone, aside for the painting of a beautiful woman hanging up on the wall. While they're moving in, Samuel notices that the painting seems to make eyes at him, as it were, much to his astonishment. As time passes, he spends all day just staring at the portrait, foregoing anything else relating to his family, until finally his wife declares that he seems to love the painting more than her. And he admits, indeed, that he does. And when she insults the painting, he strikes her, and she rightwise takes their son and leaves. He does not seem to care, though. After all, that just means he can be alone with her now. But, of course, I don't think the portrait is much interested in what sort of a man he really is, though. And she is off on a date of her own! Something a bit closer to home is the story of The Tentacle Monster in My Comic Box, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Clean My Room. I can assure you, my children, that I do not keep tentacle monsters in the long box of the damned, but far worse horrors inhabit it. Not an exaggeration, even. See, our young protagonist here is ordered by his mother to clean his room, but he says he is unable to because of said monster, who begins stealing all of his toys and games and making a quick mess of the place. When the boy objects, though, the monster says he just wants a friend to play with. And now the two become buddies, playing with toys, reading comics, at least until Mother once more screams at the both of them to clean up the mess. And now they're both grounded. Let us close things out with a little haunted house story. Lamp Deck, the story of the Lamp Mansion. St. Louis, according to the story, is known as one of the most haunted cities in America. It could be because of the thousands of lost souls from the Civil War. It could be that the city was built on sacred memorial mounds of Native Americans. Or perhaps it's because the city is built on limestone, believed by some ancient cultures to hold on to energy for a long time before it is all released forcefully at once. And since energy is never created nor destroyed, and people are made of energy, well, you get the idea. As for the Lemp Mansion itself, it is full of history, full of dead family members, rejected family members, locked in the attic and unable to play with the children on the streets, of suicides and other tragic occurrences that might affect any who decide to buy the place up cheap and renovate it. Not just the man we follow around in this story, but whoever may come later to do the same deeds. After all, how many warning signs do you need to not buy a haunted mansion? Spirits of St. Louis remind us all that horror is not based in only one locale, and monsters are not native to one region. Enjoy peeking around the corners of your own hometown, eh?